There is a sin, a very dangerous sin, that in my estimation is doing more to hold back revival than any other sin, doing more to destroy homes than any other sin, doing more to ruin this nation than any other sin, causing more Christians to live in failure and defeat than any other sin. It is the sin of pride. The Bible says that there is a sin that started war in heaven. It's the sin of pride. When the devil decided and lifted up himself and five times said, I will, I will, I will. And that pride now has come down to earth. Pride is the grossest sin, the mother of all sins. In fact, C.S. Lewis says this about pride. He says, according to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil is pride. Unchastity or being uh, unpure, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are, are mere flea bites in comparison. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. Pride says that I want to be like God. Lucifer in the kingdom of heaven fell from heaven with the fallen angels. He says, God, I don't want to worship you. I want to be like you. Adam and Eve in the garden says, God, we don't trust you. You say that that's not good, but we want to see what it is. We think maybe you're holding goodness from us. That's pride. Pride is dangerous. I'm convinced that pride is the underlying sin that causes many Christians and many leaders to fail. Look what James chapter 4 verse 6 says, God opposes the proud. Do you know what that means? It means God's on the other side. You become an enemy of God, but he gives grace to the humble. Proverbs chapter 11, and I'll just give you some scripture here. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2 says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. There's a scripture in Proverbs 13 and 10 that says, where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Proverbs 16 and 5 says this, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. I don't know if y'all picking up on this, but everywhere that pride shows up, it's accompanied by disgrace, strife, things that are detestable, punishment, destruction, and ultimately a fall. So it would seem that it's really important for us to be on the right side of pride. Given the choice to humble yourself, or have God humble you. Choose A. Always choose A. Pride is extremely dangerous. And it's defined as to be lifted up, to be high-minded, to indulge in self-esteem or self-confidence and to glory in self-achievement. I hope you noticed how many times the word self is used in that definition. Self, 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 self. The Bible says if we're going to follow Christ, we need to take up our cross and follow him, forgetting ourselves. Pride is the most destructive thing in the universe. It was pride that created the devil. It was pride that turned uh, Lucifer, the son of the morning, into Satan, the father of the night. That's what Satan's kingdom is built on. No wonder. Pride defies God. Pride ruined the human race. In the Garden of Eden, when Satan came to tempt Eve, do you think that the temptation was to taste a particular kind of fruit? That wasn't the temptation. The temptation was, take this and you will be as God. Look at all heartache, all tears, all sorrow, all war, all strife, all pain, all agony, all shame, and you can say, pride did it. Pride did it. C.S. Lewis said, as long as you're proud, you cannot know God. 
A proud man is always looking down on things and people. And as long as you are looking down, you cannot see something above you. The man who's looking down on others is not looking up at God at the same time. The place to be humble is in your heart and in your mind. And if you have a humble heart and a humble mind, then it's going to come across in a right, godly way. A humble person doesn't think more highly of themselves than they ought to, but they don't think lowly of themselves either. They really just don't have themselves on their mind that much. They know who they are in Christ, and in Him, they're bold and courageous. God has called us to be bold and to be courageous. But that doesn't mean to be obnoxious and to walk all over people and to hurt other people. You defeat pride when you live for others. Pride says, I deserve to be served. Everyone should look to me. Everyone should serve me. Those who depend on God say, I'm here to serve. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11, beautifully crafted scripture. It says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Every day, serve someone. Every day. Every day add value to people. Every day serve one. Every day live the intentional life of, of, of doing for others, sometimes what they cannot do for themselves. And if you will put people first and add value to them and serve them, it becomes absolutely amazing what you and I are going to have and achieve, how we're going to help people, and in return how it comes back to us. Benjamin Franklin said this, no one is useless in this world who lightens the burden of someone else. Only one time in the Gospels is it recorded that Jesus said, follow me and follow my example. Only one time. And that's when he was washing the feet, serving the disciples. He's washing the feet of one who will betray him, one who will deny him, who will lie about him and will curse about him, and every one of the people's feet that he will wash in his deepest, darkest hour will forsake him and run. Because I want you to see this passage because when we serve others, here's what's beautiful, we serve Jesus. I was hungry, you fed me. Jesus is talking, by the way. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was homeless, you gave me room. I was shivering, you gave me clothes. I was sick, you stopped the visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Because you see, every time you serve a person, you serve Jesus. I'm gonna serve people. That's what Jesus did. Who has the name above all names, he comes to serve. That's the title that Paul and Peter and James and Timothy, that's the title that they took upon themselves. Your identity is not in what you do. It's in whose you are. I think that God loves a humble heart because God has a humble heart. And we see that humble heart just in the way that when he came here, he came here to serve us. Even with his life and even in his death, he came here to serve us. Humble people have a servant heart. They know that the purpose of life is not about themselves. It is serving God, serving others. To love God is to love others. Jesus described himself as gentle and humble. When you learn to be humble, you are most like Christ.